All right, and here we are. What is yeah. this? Javi, happy new year to you. Happy new year to everybody. I'll just say happy it. New year. Larry David, if you know Larry David, he's got a statute of limitations on how, how long you can go in the, into the new year saying happy new year. His statute of limitations is three days. I am breaking it. I apologize. I haven't said to you guys in forever, right? So it's it's great to be here with you, man. I'm super excited about this. Great to be back. It's great to be back with such a fantastic show, with such a fantastic lineup for the rest of Benzinga's Cannabis Hours for the next quarter. We got an amazing year planned for all of you. Um, very, very excited to be back. Very happy to be back. What do you think? I want the audience to, to tell us. Are you happy that we're back? Did you miss us at all? The drop a one in the chat if you are happy. You drop a two if you go like, okay, whatever. I can live without this show. <laughs> and guys, while while you're doing that, just keep in mind too that while it, it's what, like 12, 15 degrees here in Michigan, it's 100 degrees where Javi is down in Argentina. So that's why he looks like this you know, beautifully Ooh. tanned summer person. And I look like Moby Dick over here. So just for, for all your viewing pleasure, that's that's how we are today. Um, Javi, anything you want to say about the market right now um, and, and other things that you're seeing before we bring on our guest? I mean, a lot going on. My, 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 my biggest, like the biggest pieces of news so far this year related to policy today, for instance, we learned that that past marijuana use will not cost you a federal job. This is, of course, according to a top intelligence official. Avril Haynes, Director of National Intelligence. Um, she said that security clearance applicants who have used cannabis should not be uh, instantly rejected when applying for federal employment. Yeah, I Pretty love that. There. Um, the DEA ended a five-decade federal monopoly on research on cannabis, you know, and, and research cannabis production. Um, for, for such a long time, only the, um, the University of Mississippi was allowed to produce cannabis and earlier this month the DEA or Drug Enforcement Agency in the United States issued two additional uh, permits. One goes to Croft North America Hemplex and the other one to Biopharmaceutical Research Company, BRC. What do you think? That, yeah, that's no, a good one. I love that one. I think that one's really cool. It's about time we opened up the, the floodgates a little bit there, got some other voices involved. Um, mm -hmm. And while we're on the the sort of federal outlook here. I won't go legalization. Let's go revenue for a second, right? We we wrote something recently. Um, uh, Javi, you and your team put to, put this together. Give us the overall revenue number for last year. Was Wasn't it? it some, it's it's 30, in the tens of billions, billion, right? Thirty-seven, maybe. So thirty-seven billion dollars in cannabis revenue, somewhere around that. Javi will get us the real number. But but in association with that, Javi, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we see around $10 billion in taxes yeah, as man. it relates to, to, to U.S. cannabis? I mean, this is since, I, I believe, since we legalized, right? We, we've seen uh, $10 billion of, of, of cannabis taxes raised so far. Nuts. Yeah, that's nuts. And, and where it's going is, is very interesting as well, right? Uh, I mean, so, so since the first legal states uh, started selling cannabis in 2014, uh, as a whole, all of the states combined have raised uh, more than $10 billion in, in tax revenue since. Uh, and it's very interesting because, you know, what, what uh, they're doing with, with this money varies from state to state, right? So, so in Alaska, half of, of all adult use cannabis sales taxes are invested into this recidivism reduction fund, right? So, uh, and, and re-entry programs. In California, more than $100 million have been dis distributed to community groups and, and nonprofits, uh, you know, to, to, to benefit some of the people who were negatively impacted by the war on drugs. So, you know, the, 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 you know, this long time promise, right, that we heard again and again, right, you know, cannabis taxes, they will be used for good stuff. We're seeing that, right? It, it wasn't just a political promise. It wasn't just classic politician talk. You know, we're seeing cannabis tax dollars invested into great causes, into education, into harm reduction, into 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 helping people who were jailed by, by cannabis possession now re-enter the system, right? Because if we deem this to be acceptable and, and we deem this to be good and we deem this to be 
uh, a driver of the economy nowadays and some people were jailed for two joints you know why should these people not be eligible to vote why should these people not be eligible for for certain jobs for most jobs to be honest right no it makes total sense right and i i think there's a lot of things that we're seeing move right now which are it's super interesting this thing about um you know people not being uh able to to have a federal job you know i remember it wasn't too long ago that the new administration was kicking people out for for having <laughs> feelings about marijuana right that wasn't that long ago that 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 was happening so it's interesting um that that this should come out now so i, I have just two quick announcements Shoot. um that i want to see if i can make happen here so one Aaron, I'm sharing my screen. Producer AT, would you mind just bringing that up and let me know when when this is visible? There you go. Whoa! Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're showing. Take a this look at this. Crazy. Take a look at this, you guys. So this is Benzinga Pro. Many of you out there probably already have this, right? But for those of you specifically interested in cannabis, there is a new cannabis preset feature, right? So this is not just uh, a, a platform for investors. This is a corporate intelligence tool, right? We can look at all of our advanced news. We can look at our partner feed. We've got our charting tool and, uh, and our earnings calendar here as well, right? So take a look at this. We're going to be using this throughout the shows this year. We're going to be um, specifically calling attention to this, but I think it's really cool. Aaron, I think I'm good on the screen share. We can get rid of that. But um, if you have Pro, I would highly recommend that you take a look at that preset. Um, and ask for help if you need it. Ask us for help. I'm happy to walk you through it. And and obviously we will be looking at that. One other thing right sure. after this show today, uh, there is a Benzinga Options School uh, broadcast. So you will want to stick around mm -hmm. for that. No if better educators money, I mean, than those not, guys. Just leave, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate making money, so I'm gonna go. It's but but yeah, <laughs> no, you, got, you guys should stay and watch it. Um, so shout out to that team putting that content together. It is really, really taken off. Um, so Javi, anything else before we bring our special guest over? Not really, man. I mean, I'm just very excited. Tilray reported earnings uh, this week. That is T-L-R-Y. Um, they reported second fiscal quarter results uh, for the period ended November 30, 2021, with net revenue of 155 million, up by around 20% year over year, slightly down from the prior quarter. We'll get into some of this. Um, the company also announced a new parent company that you know kind of comprises both Tilray and Afria. It's called Tilray Brands. We'll uh, seek to understand that better. Net income was particularly interesting to me, $6 million, up from a loss of $89 million in the same quarter last year. Absolutely um, astounding. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, you know, growing cannabis revenue, uh, beverage revenue was very interesting. We saw a lot in, on, on the expert front. And guess who we have on our show? Benzinga, cannabis, I guess cannabis hour because of the logo. Well, whatever, cannabis hour, even though it's a Tuesday. Um, on the Zinga Cannabis Hour today, our guest is Tilray CEO, Erwin Simon, a friend of the house who is here to answer all your questions. Erwin, welcome, yeah. man. Hey, guys. Good afternoon. And I guess, you know, being a Larry David fan um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of his sayings, but uh, I hope everybody is having, has had a happy new year and I hope you're all staying healthy and safe. I hope to have Larry David as a viewer on this show or a guest on this show at some point, Irwin. So we'll see. But uh, but happy new year, man. Thank you for joining us. You guys have had a heck of a few days here. Anything you want to start off with? What's it been like for you? What are you most proud of? You know, it's been a heck of a year. Um, yeah. And I was glad when 2021 was behind us. Um, you know, a lot happened within the cannabis industry. A lot happened, you know, within Tilray and Tilray and Afria coming together, um, us doing an acquisition in 2021 of Sweetwater Brewery, and then at the end of 21, acquiring Breckenridge Distillery in the bourbon area. Um, you know, listen, the industry has gone through its trials and tribulations. And if you look at, you know, stocks trading at one time, you know, in the 60s, and as they fell down to the end of the year, you know, it was just painful to understand and watch. And, 
you know, last year this time, I was excited as hell upon legalization. Um, around January 20th, there was a new president going to be sworn in. Um, you know, if you look at the Democratic, you know, party, cannabis was legal in California. It just was announced to become legal in New York. And, you know, with that, uh, you had a vice president that was supposedly very much into reform and um, eliminating, you know, jail sentences and non decriminalization, et cetera. You had three Democratic senators that were very excited about interesting the bill. And, you know, you saw stocks take off because of legalization supposedly going to happen. And back to Javier and Patrick, what you said before, it's incredible the amount of tax dollars that has been generated from cannabis. And, you know, you talked about Colorado, uh, close to a billion dollars and what it's done for that state. But more important, not only the tax dollars, it's the jobs it's created mm. and the infrastructure in build out. I know we are one of the largest you know, employers today in Leamington, Ontario, and basically one of the biggest providers, whether it's food service and, and other areas of growth within the town there. And, you know, Leamington because of the car industry and that had its challenges and very much free at the time. And now Tilray has come back and rescued that. And it's the same for Canada, how much dollars and tax dollars, how much employment, how much infrastructure build it's created. And, you know, with the Democrats trying to get through an infrastructure bill and looking at ways to, you know, make up the taxes, mm -hmm. like guys, legalize cannabis because right now <laughs> it is being sold out there and not one dollar of it is coming back to the tax dollars it's going into an illicit market somehow so and and there's ways to work that illicit market in there that ultimately it can be part of the legalization but i i, I come back and i just bang my head where if you look at a u.s today over 90% of Americans want cannabis legalized. In yep. essence, it's legalized today, in whether it's medical or recreational, in over 35 states one way or another. And let's just get our acts together and really get this legalized. But I'm concerned that I'm not going to see that happen. So with that, listen, it's the, what, the 11th day of January. And, you know, we got, what, another 345 days left in the year. Um, I'm in New York City today, and it is about 19 degrees. I grew up in Canada and Nova Scotia. And, you know, I kind of felt like this morning when I was in the park walking my dog and walking back from the gym that I was back there because uh, huh? every time my nose would drip before it hit my coat, it froze, okay? And I had ice cubes <laughs> hanging out of my nose. So I looked a little weird. So, Javi, I'm jealous of you. You know where you are, and I uh, thought you were. I thought you were going to say you were smelling cannabis all over New York. Well, I, mean, I, I thought that I, would remind I, you. Of you Canada. know, <laughs> I normally do, but when your nose and your nostrils are frozen, it's hard to smell anything. You know, because <laughs> of that. I, I'm curious about something, right? You say, uh, you know, one one thing that you were talking about is a year ago today, right? It seemed like the Biden administration would move. On, on cannabis reform or Congress would move on, 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 on reform. And we haven't seen any of that. So my conclusion is we cannot count on politicians doing anything. And, and I don't mean like they won't do it or, or they will, right? But we can count on it. We cannot bake it into our estimates, predictions or plans, right? So how are you dealing with this in the meantime? What is your strategy in the US, right? Uh, because, because sitting around like, yo, okay, wh when will... Uh, legalization really occur doesn't seem to be an option any longer, right? It, it was an option last year. Uh, now, like, what is the new strategy? So it was an option last year and kind of planned for it. But, you know, with that, to your point, you can't depend upon regulators. You can't depend on politicians for your future. But the good news is, you know, just by, you know, how many listeners you have that are interested in, all these cannabis episodes, you look at the trading at retail and cannabis stocks. You, you, you look at, you know, the states where cannabis is legal, the demand for cannabis. So with that, but 
you know, as a public company today that trades on NASDAQ and Toronto Stock Exchange, we cannot touch cannabis in the U.S. So what do you do? How do you build a consumer products business? And we're building a consumer products business uh, built around spirits, built around beer. And, uh, you know, to my right here is our new Breckenridge bourbon, which is a, is a great product. And one day I hope to be holding a bourbon that's infused with THC instead of alcohol. Wow. And mm -hmm. that you get some of the same benefits. You know, you probably don't get the hangover and some of the calories that you get with it, but you get, you know, a good drink. Um, you know, is it 420? No, it's later. Because at 420, we could have had a 420 beer, which, uh, again, so our business today in the U.S. is going to be built around our spirits business, going to be built around our beer business, going to be built around our Manitoba harvest hemp. And one of the big things with hemp today, and hemp today is legal within food because of the Farm Bill Act, you know, that we can go out there and infuse foods and drinks and that with with hemp and, and CBD, which, which, you know, makes sense. So that has to be the strategy today. Um, and hopefully our politicians, you know, wake up and get something done. Listen, nothing will happen this year with an election coming up. And depending upon what happens with the House and the Senate, does anything happen in 23 is, you know, a, your guess is as good as mine. Listen, we we got lobbyists, um, and they're only as good as the last person that pays them. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the politicians that really got to get this approved. Let me do a quick follow up, and then I'll let Patrick ask some questions. Um, you know, you just showed your your booze. Um, how do you compatible? You know, how how are cannabis and, and, and alcohol compatible as brands within a house of brands, right? And of course, like if you ask me, right, like on, on a lifestyle perspective, like, you know, people love cannabis, they like, they love bourbon. I personally think they're both extremely enjoyable, right? But a lot of people say like, okay, but the, the whole thing with cannabis, it's, is that it's a wellness tool and, and alcohol, not so much. So how does this fit in, right? And, and how do you compatibly, like, is, is this a long-term strategy or is this an, a meanwhile kind of strategy? I want to understand, really understand that. So it's a long-term strategy. What happens is this here. So Broken Coast, one of our cannabis brands in Canada. It's a premium brand, well-known. Here's Broken Coast IPA. It's educating consumers about the name Broken Coast. And if you come back and look, you know, beer consumers are cannabis users. So with that, there's a dual strategy here. There's taking these brands that consumers know, and they will be alcohol brands. They will be cannabis brands, and they could be non-alcohol brands or CBD brands. And I think what's important in this industry, what's important in overall, brands do matter. How do you educate consumers about different brands today? And that would be the big thing upon legalization. They would know the Breckenridge brand. They would know the 420 Sweetwater brand. And it's a brand that if you want to drink alcohol, you can drink alcohol. If you want to use it as a cannabis drink, it would be a cannabis drink. So the product lines in the categories, Xavier, is, you know, is adjacencies to spirits, alcohol, and food that be comes translated to cannabis brands upon legalization. So, so I'm going to jump in here for a second. I just do have to say I'm from Kentucky and grew up working on the bourbon trail. So, or when I, I love Breckenridge, it's a good one. I know it's not a Kentucky bourbon. I won't hold that against you, but, but, um, it's, but it's made with Colorado snow, which you don't fair. really, which you really don't have, you know, in what? Kentucky. We, we could import it. I'm just saying yeah, we could yeah, get, yeah, we, yeah, we could yeah, figure yeah. that out. No, no. So I, I, it is a phenomenal bourbon. Those of you who have not had it, it's great. Um, but let's pivot for a second. We can come back to this, this conversation about spirits. I know that it's, it's integral to what you guys are doing, but just in the, the time that we've got left about 10 minutes, I want to call out Europe and, and, and circle back to Canada. So one analyst noted from your earnings that they were super impressed about what the what you guys have been doing with your exports business. Pablo. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, Pablo from Cantor, right? Um, and I thought it was really cool because I knew about what you were doing in Europe. But how difficult is it 
to be building that export business when it's the same thing in the US, right? You're building a business around markets that are not fully operational yet, not fully legalized right, yet, right? So how do you do that? How do you continue to lay that framework so that you're growing that business and, and how does that affect what you guys are, are really building towards? So, you know, take where we've been building it. Germany got 80 million people and medical cannabis is legal in Germany. So with that today, you know, we have a medical cannabis business there. We have, you know, one of the few licenses in Germany. We are working with the German government today upon adult use legalization. So you're talking about a country with a big population and you're not sitting there with 800 LPs. So, mm -hmm. and very few licenses. So Europe will be big for us. The same with Portugal, you know, Tilray previously um, built, a, you know, a facility in Portugal. Right. And with that, you know, Portugal has a good sized population. Um, the good thing about our Portugal facility, um, it can ship to all parts of Europe at much lower cost. It can produce at much lower cost. Today, you can produce product in Canada, EU, MPG, EU GMP certified and ship it but you got to go through all these regulatory approvals to do that. So we are ready in Europe. We also bought in Europe um, a distribution business in medical products that sells to 13,000 drugstores. So today we're set up with a distribution business. We're set up with two uh, grow facilities in, in Europe today. And we sell product into 20 different countries in Europe medical cannabis and combined i think that's probably you know about 150 million people mm -hmm. um you know five times the size of canada almost half the population of the united states um and the infrastructure is there and it's done so you know we we've been doing that we've been doing that you know where we could sell medical cannabis to fund it we've invested well over a hundred plus million dollars to do it and now we expect to see, you know, uh, um, products from a legal standpoint being sold in Germany, Portugal, um, Israel, uh, Deutsche Land, et cetera. And, you know, you come back, listen, where you are today in Argentina. I mean, you know, in, in, re in regards to that, um, we own a drugstore there for a distribution business to be able to sell cannabis. We've done a lot with the hospitals in Argentina in regard to epilepsy and testing there. So there's a lot we've done around the surface. And early on, you guys were talking about the cannabis industry today being somewhere around a $65 billion business. That does not include a lot of the illicit market mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and the world. And it's well over a hundred billion dollars. Um, so, when you step back and you think about how big the size is, it's limited to those that are participating in today. And, you know, Tilray is, you know, well out in front. Um, but there's a lot of things got to happen in between with good data, good people, good AI, good, you know, listen, anybody can grow seven plants on their balcony or in their house. Okay. <laughs> But when you're growing cannabis in 2 million square feet of greenhouses, okay, you know, and when you want to get the potency and get, you know, 24, 25s, you know, uh, you, you really got to know how to grow cannabis today. When you want to get the right yields and low cost producer, and yes, you can grow it somewhat in a building or outdoor but think about it we're growing a, our cannabis facility a million million and a half is about 300 uh, football fields so just imagine growing cannabis in four or five hundred football fields with powering it water sunlight and that's what depends on your different strains and grow so that's what we had to learn and perfect over the last couple of years to get the right products for consumers. So yeah. it, and just in the interest of time, we only have about 
five or so minutes left here. I want to get to one question. I, and thought, I, want to I, double back. Whole, I thought I had the whole afternoon. I, I no, know, no, the entire yeah, afternoon. Yeah. We're going to get yeah, you for an entire I'm afternoon crazy. at one yeah. point. I'll, well, I'll provide the beer, the cannabis, and the bourbon. You know? yeah, well, listen, you had me at, at all of those, basically. But <laughs> but here, I know we've got some good questions in the chat, too, so I'll make this one quick. But Ooh, it's very important yeah. for the investors watching. How are you communicating with your retail base? How do you stay on their minds? How how important are they to you? Give it give us the whole the whole shebang, right? Because you're talking to a bunch of them now. So the retail shareholder base to me is in, is important as important as my heart beats. Okay, my heart stops beating, I'm in trouble. I lose my shareholder base, I'm in trouble. And you know, listen, you you, you want to be able to communicate directly to them. Unfortunately, we do have securities laws with Reg FD and how we communicate and, you know, what gets translated back, et cetera. Um, and I have to get muzzled many times by our lawyers and our IR people. And I got Baron yelling at me, you can't, you can't email back to this person. You can't do this. You can't do that. Baron's great, you know, by the way. She'll, I, she'll I, help you. She'll help me. Yeah, she, she, she yells at me more than my wife, okay? And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I love to communicate because I'm a big believer. You buy our stock, you got to have information. Mm -hmm. But with that is, is this here. In regards to tell the truth, tell the good, tell the bad, and, and, and don't hide. I mean, there's good stuff that happens out there, and there is stuff that, gee, you know, we got to tell you bad news out there. Um, and I think it's so important. And listen, I come on and talk to you guys every week to be able to tell about all the things that are happening out there. Be able to get press releases out. Um, you know, because of COVID, it's been a lot harder to communicate, a lot harder to have investor meetings. You know, the last two days we had ICR and we're out there, you know, talking to investors all the time. Um, Barron is on Reddit all the time communicating. Barron is out there trying to Make sure we're tweeting stuff out there. And, and uh, you know, when investors came back to us and asked us questions that we answered on our earnings call, you very seldom would mm -hmm. ever see a company that would answer investors' call, investor questions on an earnings call and we answer them. So we try and do our best. Um, but listen, um, it's important that we do talk to investors and I don't know how many CEOs and that you get coming on here to talk to your, you know, audience, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important. And you got such a great audience that, that is, you know, is, is listening here. Definitely have a couple questions from the chat. I'm, I'm going to source one uh, from numerous niece that I'm going to uh, somewhat merge with a question from Twitter. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I heard that the InBev deal, you know, but wiser maker is off. So maybe a little bit of an update on that. And then, you know, are you planning or are you interested at all in, in doing a partnership with any other alcohol companies, whether it's, you know, Diageo or whatever? Are you looking at pharma? Are you looking at tobacco, right? It, this is, these are some of the questions that, that I've seen in the chat and on Twitter repeat again and again. So, you know, the AB and I deal, you know, was off. And it was not off, I think, very early on. Um, you know, it was not the right deal for Tilray and probably not the right deal for AB&I. You know, we today produce products for them in our facility in London, Ontario. Um, it was not adversarial. It was not anywhere hostile. It just, and, and the reason I think this has been terminated back in May or June, um, ultimately it ended and we had to put it in our disclosures and that's why everybody learned about it. But today with their own, manufacturing facilities, our own abilities to distribute beer and having, you know, alcohol distributors um, very much, we can go out there and make products with THC or CBD. And it just didn't make sense with the partnership to move forward. In regards to partnerships with, with other, you know, spirit companies or other companies out there, listen, I'm big into strategic partnerships that make sense for R&D for distribution, for innovation. It's not just for money. And I think you go back and you look at, did the Altria deal work with Kronos? Did the, did the you know, Constellation deal work with, you know, you, you know, Canopy? I'll let people answer those. But 
it's got to be the right deal for both companies that's going to create value for shareholders. But more important, we're going to put products out there for consumers that consumers want. And yeah, I'm open to personal care products. I'm open to food products. I'm open to, you know, with drug companies, because, you know, I was just sent an email about, you know, how many, how seven benefits of marijuana says doctors today. Okay. The number of people turning to marijuana for medical reasons for growing with good reasons, proven benefits such as prevented seizures in patients with autism. So there is so many benefits in cannabis for anxiety, for sleep. You know, listen, we're all suffering mm-hmm. through mental illness today because of COVID. So, yeah, there is, you know, benefit. And, and with that, so partnering with the right strategic partner would make sense. And it's not for economics, it's for distribution, it's for innovation. Exactly. It's for getting the product out there. Well, I think that answered one of the questions here. Uh, Kurt, thank you so much for asking that question. I think that was great about a potential partner. There's always the opportunity to potentially inherit uh, partnerships that are out there if there's M&A in the pipe. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's even on your mind. I'm not sure it has to be in some regard. But here's, here's an, I'll let you go, come back to that too if you have a response. But, but Kurt asked another question more along the lines of what you were just talking about on the medical side um, on clinical trials. He says, Tilray had at least eight to 10 in the works. What progress has been made, uh, if any? Is there anything that you can share with our audience about that? Listen, uh, they're still in the works. And I can share with you, you know, the ones in regards to epilepsy, um, where they have reduced seizures, you know, down from three, four hundred down to three, four, three, four a day. Um, I can, you know, also share with you some of the other ones that we are doing basically in Europe that we're still working on. Um, the unfortunate thing, you know, about these are expensive and they take time. So I don't have anything else to report other than the one on epilepsy. Um, and, and I think part of the problem has been in regards to these slowing down. Again, I hate bl- blaming things on COVID. Okay. But, you know, not being able to get the patients, not being able to get the data that because of COVID has absolutely stopped some of these where where they were doing these tests in hospitals and stuff like that. So we've had some, you know, step backs because of COVID. But we continue to invest in medical cannabis because I think it's a big, big, big opportunity there in so many different ways in regards. And, and that's what will drive, you know, increased you know, legalization in countries today of medical cannabis by having, you know, results and and having medical data that supports that. But I think, you know, the big thing which we're also trying to do is get medical cannabis on medical plants. You know, uh, uh, Amazon in the U.S. pays for medical cannabis on their medical plan. Other companies do pay for it. And, you know, in Canada, it's not on medical plans. So, what we're trying to do is a couple things is have medical cannabis not sold just online. Can it be sold, you know, at drug stores? Um, how can it be part of medical plans? How will companies pay for it? Um, you know, you talked before about cannabis. You know, I remember when I ran, you know, Hain Celesto originally, we used to test for cannabis. Mm-hmm. We used to drug test people, you know. And I remember in Colorado, I was told if I drug test, it's I wouldn't so have any crazy. employees. But uh, you know, those <laughs> days, those days are over. It's not, it's decriminalized. You know, you got a new DA here in New York that said you wouldn't get arrested for, you know, cannabis, mm-hmm. and because it's legal. So uh, I think you know, there's a lot we're going to do there, and there's a lot more we can do. Thank you so much for this. I think we're over time, way over time. But I, I, I want to. Drop one quick prompt, and it's almost teasing you. Uh, Berger here says, Erwin, got on media and say this. Tilray Erwin, is going to be the Tesla of weed stocks. You will break the internet. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. <laughs> so li- listen, uh, I don't want to be Elon Musk. Uh, uh, you know, um, you know. listen, I-, I come back and I think the key thing here, you know, we're in a category that's a smart category. It, and, and what I've tried to change about this category is, you know, the sophistication of a category, no different it is in the spirits industry. It's not about just yeah. 
smoky weed, it's it's cannabis, it's pre-rolls, it's flour, it's good quality products, okay? You know, in regards to how it's sold, in regards to the quality control and the regulatory that we go through to make sure you know how the product's grown, there's no pesticides, what the flour is coming from, and the and the process it goes through. And, you know, part of the problem that's happened the industry, you know, when it got started, like any industry, had, you know, some companies that probably didn't do the right thing, had some CEOs probably didn't do the right thing. So what we're doing as we speed the camera ahead is really professionalize the industry. How do we take it to the next level? How do we bring in data to really understand the business? It's just not throw things against the wall. How do we make sure we got good artificial intelligence? How do we have really good people in here? How are we communicating like you asked me before? Retail investors are so important to every industry today. It's not like, oh, you don't have fidelity in your stock. No, I don't have fidelity. It's okay. You know, and with that, how do I have a good investor base where I'm listening to? Because my investor base are good customers and good buyers, too. You better listen to your shareholders and better listen to your customers. So with that, listen. I, I, again, you know, I get asked all the time, when you grow up, tell me a company that you'd like to be like. And it, it's kind of like, I want to redefine. You listen, the P&Gs of the world, the Nestle's of the world, you know, they're old stodgy companies or how are they evolving and changing? And, you know, one thing Jeff Bezos has said, if Amazon doesn't change, it will go to business one day. And that's the thing I look at at Tilray. How are we evolving and changing every day? And not sure that I want to be the Tesla. I'm not sure I want to be the General Motors. I'm not sure I want to be the Unilever. But I want to be a bunch of things that do a lot of the right things. And you know what? We will make mistakes. We will screw up. But step back and say, we did that. We learned from it. And we're fixing it. Because a lot of people like to say, I'm wrong. I screwed up. I made mistakes. We had a bad quarter. You know, if there's a, if there's a bumper sticker out there, S-H-I-T happens. And when it does, <laughs> you deal with it. Listen, there's no better way to close than that, Erwin. I feel like the, the folks on the, on, the, on the show today, you guys in the chat, you're hearing it direct from the man himself, right? You, you can ask your questions. It sounds like Tilray will answer them, right? So Erwin, props to you and the, the crazy, crazy last couple of days I'm sure it's been for you guys. I'm glad to see some some good news coming out, man. Thank you very much for being on. Erwin Simon, CEO of Tilray Brands. Thank and you again. Thank, hey, guys, thank you. And congratulations on what you're doing to communicate to retail investors. And, uh, you know, I look forward to joining you again. And I look forward to hosting you guys in our facility in Leamington, where we can sit in a million and a half to two million square feet of grow. And we just sit there and smell it. Okay. Love we'll it. do that. Sounds we will make fun. a plan. All right. Great, guys. You're close. You're in Detroit. You just got to come across the bridge. It's really not far at all. Well, I could probably I, see you. I, and you just got to have a COVID test of the passport. That's it. <laughs> well, good. I can do both of those. Well, Erwin okay. Simon, thank you again, my friend. Uh, we'll let you make your rounds, I'm sure. But, but we really appreciate you coming on. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Javi, what a show, man. Man, what a show. I don't want to take up any more time. I know we're way over time. We're stealing right. time from our successors. What is up next? Well, up next is our, our Benzinga Options Trading School broadcast. You must stick around. These guys know what they're talking about. They will help you make money. I'm out of here. They're coming on. Till next time. Like and subscribe. BZCannabis.com for events. Benzinga.com slash cannabis for all your news. See you Thursday, 4.30 p.m with another great guest. <gasps> Teaser.